Welcome to the Dancer's 60 to 80 Skills Guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you train to leave your friends behind better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this to, well, still this, because you basically have your entire toolkit already. But this guide is still framed in the mindset of players newer to Final Fantasy. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. We will, however, be crafting openers as we go, to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. 60 for when you first get the job, 70 for Stormblood, and then finally at level 80 for Shadowbringers. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbar builds, it'll make sense at 80. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way that makes you feel comfortable as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. Let's begin. Obtaining Dancer is simple. Provided you own the expansions, at level 60 you will be able to undertake the job quest to obtain Dancer in Limsa Lominsa, south of the Aetherite Plaza, near the Rogues Guild. It has no base class, so any battle class or job may pick this up. You must also complete your level 10 class quest from your starting guild and become certified to join other guilds, which is almost guaranteed to have been achieved just by normally playing the game. Upon becoming Dancer, you have almost all of your skills to begin with. Rather than going through one at a time, I will go through sets of skills and their effects. By now, you have a basic grasp on the game enough to handle it. Plus, Dancer is very compartmentalized when you break it down. I'll be grouping things together in a way I feel makes the most sense. We also start with a group of ranged roll actions. These are some important skills and are helpful to you and the parties you will get. Check the ranged roll actions guide in the description if you need an in-depth look on these skills. I do recommend it since some of them are actually useful. There's also increased action damage 1 and 2 at levels 50 and 60 which we very much have no reason to care about. Now onto the actual toolkit. Level 1, level 2, level 20, and level 40, Cascade, Fountain, Reverse Cascade, and Fountainfall. This set of four skills is our main set of combo skills and are all interconnected. The main combo is Cascade into Fountain. Never use Fountain outside of a combo action. If you are using Fountain, you have to use Cascade first, which Cascade is a 250 potency hit into a 300 potency Fountain. For now, let's ignore the dancing bit and look at the 50% chance to proc special buffs. Flourishing Cascade and Flourishing Fountain. These buffs are required procs to be able to use the other two skills Reverse Cascade and Fountain Fall, which this is why I have them all grouped together like this. If a normal combo is a horizontal progression, these proct combos are vertical combo progression. Reverse Cascade and Fountain Fall are hits of 300 and 350 potency respectively. First, let me mention that despite these being weapon skills, they do not break your main combo. You can end up doing a string of hits in the order of Cascade, Flourishing Cascade, Fountain, Fountain Fall, if you are lucky and get procs from both hits. We will want to do this for two reasons. For one, they are a step up in potency compared to the skills that precede them, as combos tend to do. For two, there's a further 50% chance that both of these proc skills can grant a fourfold feather. We will get into feathers later, but for now, we'll focus on just these four skills. We want to be using procs as we get them, since feathers are extremely important. And if we don't use reverse cascade procs, then do cascade, we could overwrite our proc by accident, losing us an entire proc and possibly a feather. 
Get used to using procs as we get them, and while you're at it, take a close look at the colors of these skills. We have red, blue, green, and yellow. If you're colorblind, that's in order. Cascade, Fountain, Reversed Cascade, and Fountain Fall. And with that blindness in mind, I am sorry for what we're about to go over next. Level 15, Standard Step. On a short 30 second recast, we dance for up to 15 seconds. Despite being an ability, this is part of the global cooldown and will go on cooldown when using any weapon skills. Standard Step will become Standard Finish when we are done dancing. Standard Finish is the ability we're going to be putting the rest of our focus on, in addition to our main combo attacks. Remember that each of those actions mention changing while dancing. Upon using Standard Step, all of these buttons will change into the following abilities. Cascade becomes Emboite. Fountain becomes Atrache. Reverse Cascade becomes Jeté. Fountainfall becomes Pirouette. And look again at the colors. The colors of the skills correlate. Cascade and Emboite are both red and etc. But let me give you colorblind people another option. Emboite is a rose. Entrache is a bird. Jeté is a leaf. Pirouette is a crown. These do not correlate to the original skills in any way, as there is most definitely no flower in the cascade icon. Luckily, you also have one last way to effectively perform your dance. If the colors of the skills fail you, and the symbols fail you, the skill you need to press will have the shiny combo border. And this border will follow you through the whole dance, all the way up to the finish. All of this matters because of the step gauge. Using standard step will cause the gauge to transform into a pair of colored symbols, with the current symbol you need to do pulsing. These refer to the four dance positions we just went over. In this clip, I get blue bird into green leaf. So I want to do entrache into jeté. Luckily, there's no punishment for doing the wrong move besides the time wasted for doing the wrong move, which is still a punishment. Even if we do the first step right, then do the second step wrong, we can just do a third step and use the correct second step, but aim to only do two correct steps. Also note that you will never get the same step twice in a dance. Every step will be different. You might get jeté in every dance you do, but the other step will never be a second jeté in a row. When we have done both steps the step gauge tells us to do, we return to standard finish. This is a large AoE that gains power based on how many successful steps you did. It hits for 15 yams around you, which it can't be understated how huge this is. If you're not forced to be attacking multiple enemies at once, say, solo in the overworld, but multiple enemies are next to each other, you need to consciously aim your standard finish. There's two effects to standard finish. The first is obviously the damage. For zero steps, the first enemy hit is hit with a 500 potency hit, and all other enemies a 125 potency hit. One step, 750 and 187 potency, and for the two hits you should be aiming for, a massive 1,000 potency and 250 potency for every other enemy hit. The second effect is a standard finish with a duration of 60 seconds. Functionally, this is a permanent damage up buff for you and your dance partner, who I'll go over in a moment. You get no standard finish for zero steps, a 2% damage buff for one step, and the two step you should be going for is 5% damage up. 60 seconds and infinite are two very different amounts of time. The infinite time comes from in that the cooldown of standard step is only 30 seconds. You should be using standard step every time it comes off of cooldown. 1000 potency is a huge hit and 5% damage up is too good to pass up beyond that. 
So, to sum it all up, standard step goes as follows. Use standard step, use the two steps in the order given, use standard finish. Afterwards, we can return to using our normal GCDs, getting damage and collecting feathers. But we're going to put feathers on the back burner for just a little longer to talk about. Level 60, Closed Position. Closed Position has us choose a party member to be our dance partner. This is completely passive beyond activating it. We don't need to do anything else we wouldn't do otherwise. But... As we mentioned before, whoever you make your dance partner is going to share in that 5% damage up buff. As such, we want to pick our dance partner carefully. We want to give it to whoever is doing the most damage. Here, I'm going to show you a general ranking of who you want to be giving dance partner to. But, keep in mind the most important part, this is not gospel. A bad samurai can do less damage than anyone else in the party, even you, but a really good samurai is going to be better than just about anyone else. There is no good way to tell who is the right person to partner beyond this chart. You can look at titles, gear, how much they are or are not dying, or general playstyle such as not using AoE for trash mobs, and even use the aggro list if you have to. It's not a good measure, but whoever is in second place of aggro behind the tanks, or third if both tanks are ranking up the aggro in 8-man content, that person may be the best choice. But when we first get into an instance, we don't know who that person is going to be. So we have to randomly pick, and hope for the best until the fight gets going. You can swap your dance partner mid-fight, but you may be too busy trying to stay alive to notice. As for the chart, S rank are the three strongest DPS, period. They're well and above everything else. Everything with an A rank is relatively close enough that it won't matter who you pick across all of the choices, assuming equal skill and gear. Bard and Dancer are each in their own tiers because they're each a tier worse in personal damage, no matter how good their utility is. Finally, we have tanks and healers because they're even lower still, or usually should be. Again, there's a variety of factors that can determine who the actual best choice for your partner is. Again, this is a general tier list, but every player you meet can exceed expectations in either direction. But in general, I hope this makes it clear you should always partner a DPS, even if it's another dancer. You will both get the 5% damage boost for each other's standard steps. So if your only other choice is a dancer, that's perfectly fine if they're truly the one doing the most damage besides you. Also keep in mind the following. In 8-man content, do not partner the same person as another dancer. The buffs do not stack like this. You can only have one dance partner standard step. If someone already has a dance partner applied, pick somebody else. Also be wary that your dance partner must be within the 15 yams of the attack to get the buff. Which, the range is huge, but some arenas get even bigger than that. This was all long-winded and probably overly explained, but when it comes to dancer, these first few sections seem to be the sticking points with understanding the job as a whole, especially the dance partner stuff. If nothing else, I hope this serves to clear up some misconceptions and misinformation I've seen people say about Dancer and who they should dance partner. But, let's finally talk about Fourfold Feathers. Level 30, Fourfold Fantasy and Dance Partner. Fourfold Fantasy is what allows Reverse Cascade and Fountainfall to actually give us Fourfold Feathers. So anything from Hawk Manor and beyond, we can get Feathers. Fan Dance is the use of these Feathers. One use of Fan Dance is one Feather. It's an off-global ability we can weave between global attacks for 150 potency. It's not all that special right now, but trust me, it becomes even more important later on. If you get a feather during a boss, 
spend it for fan dance. But that already rounds out our entire single target toolkit. Now we can talk about the AOE toolkit. Level 15, level 25, level 35, and level 45. Windmill, Blade Shower, Rising Windmill, and Blood Shower. These work exactly the same as your single target attacks, but without the connected dance steps. The main combo is Windmill into Blade Shower, but each has a 50% chance to proc a stronger version, Rising Windmill and Blood Shower respectively. These stronger hits have a further 50% chance to give us a fourfold feather. There's a couple really important key points. The first is the power of these skills. The main combo is 150 potency into 200 potency, while Rising Windmill and Blood Shower are 300 and 350 potency each. You may remember that Reverse Cascade and Fountainfall were also 300 and 350 potency. Keep that in mind later, but in general, these potencies are stupidly high, and this is our AoE. Dancers will use their full AoE toolkit on as few as just two enemies. You still want a standard step for the buff and damage, since it's a strong AoE on its own merits, but as soon as they're even just two enemies, Cascade and Fountain are not to be touched. And remember, more enemies means even more power out of your AoE. Further, all of these are not ranged skills. They are melee skills with a small 5 yalm radius. You should be in melee range anyway, if just for standard step, but now trash pulls force you to be a melee player if you want to be effective, which your AoE is extremely effective since it only takes two enemies to be stronger than your single target. Please get into the thick of it and destroy the enemies with your AoE power. There's no reason to be all the way in Timbuktu. Level 50, Fan Dance 2. That last statement applies to Fan Dance 2 as well. Be in melee range as this is a 5 yom AoE around us for 100 potency on every enemy hit. This is what we should spend our feathers on during AoE. It's stronger than Fan Dance 1 on just 2 enemies, so when it comes to spending those feathers on just 1 enemy use Fan Dance 1, on any group of enemies 2 or more use Fan Dance 2. And that is the entirety of our offensive toolkit at level 60. But we do have three more skills to go over. Level 50, on Avon. On a 30 second cooldown, we can dash forward a fairly large distance of 10 yams, but cannot be used if you have a bind debuff. It's also based on the direction your character is facing, not your camera. If for whatever reason you stopped walking and are falling behind the party, you can catch up by using On Avon in addition to any normal sprinting you should do. It also allows us to do mechanics quickly, such as taking some kind of AoE out of the group, or maybe you got a stack marker and you need to get into the group. You should already be in the group, but if you aren't, you can quickly use On Avon to dash back in and get ready for the stack. It's not something you should really rely on too much, since the other range don't have skills like this, but it's an extremely useful movement skill to use as you need it. Level 52, Curing Waltz. On a 60 second cooldown, this has a 300 potency heal for all allies in range of you or your dance partner. 300 potency as a DPS is not the same as a healer's 300 potency though. Curing Waltz has an extremely short range, a tiny 3 yom radius around you and your dance partner. If nothing else, this is a useful self heal when you are alone or taking extra damage because you messed up during a boss. But really, this is useful even for it being a smaller heal than you'd like. After a raid wide, you can use Curing Waltz to heal up the party a little bit, provided they all aren't spread halfway to Timbuktu. Or maybe it's a trash pool. You might be able to save the healer a heal by using Curing Waltz near the tank to specifically heal them. Even a tiny heal can help out a lot. It's small, but it's still enough. 
Also keep in mind that there are two heals. You can heal people twice by having them in range of your dance partner and in range of you. This makes a total of this actually 600 potency if everyone is close together. But good luck with that, that almost never happens. Level 56, Shield Samba. This is a very similar use case to curing waltz, but a lot easier to use. On a 120 second cooldown, everyone within a 20 arm radius takes 10% less damage for 15 seconds. It also cannot be used at the same time as the Bard and Machinist versions of this skill. Rather than after the raid wide hit, you can use this before the raid wide hit and then use Curing Waltz right after anyway. Raid wides and other unavoidable damage attacks are the best uses of Shield Samba, but you'll use it in trash pulls too just like Curing Waltz. But this time, it's way stronger. Your tank pulled 3 packs of enemies, 10% less damage from all of those enemies is a huge defense boost. This is probably the most common way I use skills like Shield Samba. Shield Samba gets more powerful in 8 man content too, especially extreme and harder content. Raid wides hurt a lot harder in those fights and can save lives a lot more often. And that covers the full gambit of what Dancer starts with. And this is the point where I would normally go over an opener, but the problem is Dancer doesn't really have much of an opener. Just about all we have right now is using standard step before pool, ideally more than 10 seconds before pool. Watch here, I'm going to do a 15 second countdown just to show off how you can ideally start a fight. I start the 15 seconds and immediately begin to dance. When the timer ends, the tank pulls the boss and I use standard step. That's it. That's the full optimization at this point. Very rarely, to just about never, will a tank use a countdown, unfortunately. More often than not, you'll just have to rush in and use standard step to start rather than any conscious timing on your end. From there, it's just a matter of purposefully using our procs and feathers under the effects of party buffs such as Dragoon's Battle Litany or such other. We will actually have something more akin to a small opener later, but in general, Dancer will just use this standard step on cooldown and use this skills on a priority system. Use procs first, then fountain is next in importance, and if we have nothing else, we fall back to cascade. Use what's about to fall off first though. Say we have reverse cascade and fountain fall at the same time, use whichever proc we will lose first. Procs only last for 20 seconds after all. Keep up the flow as much as you can, and keep the pressure. Remember to partner whoever seems to be performing the best within the criteria I laid out, and perform your best with using procs, and staying relatively close to make use of your dance and defensive utility, and outright in melee range for our AoE. We otherwise have very little to keep track of. Practice up in all the ways you can to prepare for our Stormblood toolkit. Level 62, Devilment. On a 120 second cooldown, both you and your designated dance partner get increased critical hit rate and direct hit rate, 20% for each for 20 seconds. Now we further see why picking our dance partner matters so much. This is extremely powerful. Generally, we want to throw it out every time it's up, both in trash and in bosses. If you need a more concrete power boost amount, direct hit is roughly a 25% damage increase. Critical hits are a base of around 40% damage increase. And a direct crit is all the way up towards an 80% power boost. Also, like with standard finish, Multiple dances cannot give their devilments to the same player at the same time, so spread out your dance partners. Level 66, Fan Dance 3. Starting off, Fan Dance 1 and 2 now have proc rates of 50%. They both have a 50% chance to proc Fan Dance 3. It is a mix of both as well. It does 200 potency to a targeted enemy, 
and all enemies within five yams of it. So it could use it at range, but it's also an AoE. As such, no matter how we're using our feathers, both for single target and for AoE, we want to use every single Fan Dance 3 proc we get. It's only 200 potency, but it's an ability to weave between GCDs, and every bit of extra potency is good, especially in AoE. Since remember, more enemies means multiplied power. And now we have three levels of procs. Our base attacks have a 50% chance to proc further moves that have a 50% chance to grant us a feather, and spending a feather has a 50% chance to give us Fan Dance 3. I hope you like staring at your hotbars because getting used to this can take a bit of time. If you separate your bar into single target and AoE like I do, place a Fan Dance 3 in range of both sections. The fact I have two Fan Dance 3s on my hotbars is not an accident. It's way easier for me to use it in single target and AoE when I have things set up like this. Level 68, Enhanced Anavant. This turns Anavant into a skill with charges. Now we can hold two charges at once. The moment we use a charge, the next charge will begin to charge with the same 30 second cooldown as before. This just further increased our mobility, not that we weren't already extremely mobile. Level 70, Technical Step. On a much longer 120 second cooldown, this works exactly the same as Standard Step, but is stronger and has a chain of 4 steps. And is our only job quest skill. So as before, 0 steps is 500 potency, 1 step is 750 potency, and 2 steps is 1000 potency, with 75% less potency for all enemies hit beyond the first one. At 3 steps it becomes 1250 potency, and the full 4 steps you are aiming for is a full 1500 potency. I hope you like big numbers. But the even bigger effect is the technical finish buff. 1 step is 1%, 2 steps is 2%, 3 steps is 3%, and 4 steps like you want to get is 5% damage up to all allies within range for 20 seconds. This also stacks with the standard finish buff you and your dance partner get. However, this does not stack with the technical step of other dancers. Because of this, try and aim to stagger your technical steps with multiple dancers. You will technical step the start, then the other dancer will technical step when your technical step runs out, and etc. A 5% party-wide buff is a lot of damage gone to waste if you don't all agree to spread out your technical steps. Do your best to work together. But that leads us right back into our opener, or what little of one we have. It's very, very tiny. We still follow the priority system, but we can start with the following. Pre-pull standard step with the required steps like before, then on pull do standard finish. Immediately go right into technical step. Do the four steps, and use technical finish. Do a cascade to delay a GCD, and start our main attacks, and weave in devilment after. This times things optimally for our own benefit, and our dance partner's benefit. This also prevents your attacks from drifting and becoming weirdly misaligned later. Both Technical Step and Devilment are 120 second cooldowns, so if we have stuff drift, we could lose out on some of the benefits, most of them coming from the rest of our toolkit. Drifting will basically ruin the synergy with our dance partner, despite how good or bad we personally have it. But that's really all we can plan for at this point. Beyond the opener, we just use stuff on cooldown, and constantly pray we get good procs. Especially if they lead all the way down to Fan Dance 3. At this point, we're just at the mercy of RNG, and praying co-dancers we get agree to stagger technical steps so everyone wins. But that's going to be even more required in Shadowbringers. Level 72, Flourish. On a 60 second cooldown, this grants us a full set of all of our procs. We are granted a use of Reverse Cascade, 
Fountain Fall, Rising Windmill, Blood Shower, and Fan Dance 3. We want to use all of these procs in single target. Remember how our AoE procs are the same power as our single target procs? Yeah, we're actually using AoE skills for single target. Rising Windmill and Blood Shower are single target skills in power, despite being AoE. The same does not quite hold for the reverse though. On two enemies, sure, use your single target procs, but in general, three or more, Reverse Cascade and Fountain Fall are not good in AoE. So while you do want to use Flourish for free AoE procs in trash pools, we won't be able to capitalize on all of the procs. But 3 out of 5 ain't bad. But this is the only other skill we needed for what little we have of an opener. I'm still not going to do a formal go over like in all my other guides, but I will go over how this fits in at least. After our technical finish, we weave in Flourish to get in all of our procs available. Instead of Cascade, we'll use Reverse Cascade, then weave in Devilment. Afterwards, we'll use all of our procs and our Fan Dance 3. From there, we do things as normal, spending feathers and using procs as we get them. As I said over and over, it's super simple of an opener, and everything we do nearly completely relies on the RNG we get. The least I can say about it is that it flows together well, despite all the luck involved. Level 76, a spree and saber dance. And yes, that is actually how it is pronounced. Go look it up. We gained a new feature to our fourfold feather gauge, a meter for a spree that caps at 100 gauge. Both of our dances will also now give the buff Esprit in addition to the damage buff to our affected allies, which can be stacked by multiple dancers. But you cannot stack both of your Esprit effects from Standard Step and Technical Step at the same time, so you can't double dip on your dance partner. You can only have the Standard Step on them. That is to explain, our spree is generated by you and your allies using spells or weapon skills, and we want to generate as much a spree as we can for a saber dance, which costs 50 a spree per use. This is a GCD and does a 600 potency AoE with a small 5 yarm radius around the target. All enemies beyond the first only take 300 potency, which is still a super strong AoE just not as strong as Blood Shower. We want to use this for both single target and AoE since that 600 potency hit is our strongest weapon skill. And let me be clear about something. This chart I showed before, this is all still true. All jobs seemingly have the same Esprit generation rate, but the number of Esprit actions each of these jobs take is negligible. More important is the standard step buff you are giving your partner. As such, giving it to the high personal DPS jobs is a good choice, and if we can figure out which of our party members are, we give it to the good players. Ultimately, the good player will maximize the number of skills they use. A bad player will not be constantly keeping their GCD rolling, they'll stop attacking or die, and so as before, follow the chart if everyone seems good, but ultimately try and partner the best player in the group. You will help them more than anyone else, and they will help you more than anyone else could help you. Remember to be flexible with who you are willing to partner. And further keep in mind that this chart changes once you get into higher level content and trying to optimize. Level 78, Enhanced on Avant 2. Same as the one at 68, this adds a charge to on Avant. Now we can store three charges in total. Movement? We have that. Level 80, Improvisation. On a 120 second cooldown, we wildly wave our arms around for 15 seconds. If we take any action during Improvisation, including any and all movement, the skill ends prematurely. 
What this does is create a small 6 ohm radius circle around us that has a couple of different effects, both for us and our allies. The first effect is probably the most important part. For you and each of your allies standing inside of your improvisation, you will generate a spree. You generate three on your own and an additional point of a spree for each ally standing inside the circle for a maximum of 10 a spree per tick of improvisation. To which, this works like a dot, ticking every three seconds, but it also ticks once for just using the skill. So by yourself, you'll generate 18 a spree. For your whole party, you'll generate a full 60 a spree. Also, apparently your chocobos count. Not that you'd want to use it for your chocobo, but I thought it was funny. The second effect is party utility. Everyone inside of it gains a 10% healing buff. This won't matter much because of the use cases of this skill. The main problem is when we use it. We will only use this in breaks in the fight. By now you've seen that just about every single trial involves the boss using some form of ultimate attack that you can't attack them for the duration of. You just have to wait and watch. But this makes for the perfect time to use improvisation to generate some esprit in the downtime. While ultimate attacks typically aren't all that much to heal through for a wide variety of reasons, this makes it just a little bit easier to do so. You'd use this anyway for your own reasons, but at least it's there and helps the party in some small way. To make more use out of the healing buff though, especially in dungeons, we can just randomly use improvisation. Watch as I run here and use improvisation. I never stop moving and the improvisation falls off immediately. However, the healing buff has a delayed fall off. You can use this just like curing waltz and shield samba. This is especially useful for trash pools where healing is tightest. Use one of your AoE skills, use improvisation to hit the tank with the healing buff, and then go right back into spamming your AoE skills. It's a very short healing buff, but it's better than nothing, and you even get a very, very tiny amount of esprit out of it. The biggest issue with this skill though? Good luck convincing people to actually stand inside of it. Healers have been unable to convince people to do this for seven years running. Thank you for watching my Dancer 60 to 80 skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. My goal is to help players improve in whatever ways I can. Take care and have fun in your adventures across Eorzea. May the power of Ananidhogs lay waste to your enemies.